What's up YouTube, it's your boy Rhett, back at it again with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Bitcoin Rewards debit card from Fold. I've been using this card now for about four months, so if you watch until the end of this video, you're gonna get the things that I really like about this card, the things that I really don't like about this card, and then my opinion about whether or not you should be trying to get on the wait list to get one of these cards for yourself. So go down below, smash the like button for YouTube algorithm, and let's get started. <laughs> Obviously the best part about this card is that it's giving you the cash back in Bitcoin, which like I talked about in the video that I did about Lolly, which is my favorite Bitcoin cash back web browser app that I'll link for you up here in the cards. Just like I talked about in that video, because you're getting Bitcoin back instead of cash back, you could eventually end up making more money from your purchase than you actually paid out in the purchase. In that previous video, I had bought some courses from Udemy when the price of Bitcoin was really low. And since then the price of Bitcoin has gone up like 10 or 11 or 12 X. And so now I've actually made money from buying those courses. And a similar thing could happen to you here from using this fold card. If you hold the Bitcoin for long enough, and if you make the purchase at a favorable Bitcoin price, you might actually end up making money from some of your purchases here if you hold over a long enough period of time. However, there is a really good skeptical argument to this, and that's that you should just be trying to get the highest cash back rate possible, and then taking that cash and investing into Bitcoin. So for the things that I really like about this card, I'm going to leave the fact that the rewards are in Bitcoin coin to the side and just talk about what percent rewards can you get. I'm not going to talk about the price of Bitcoin appreciating or depreciating. I'm just going to talk about what the percentages that you could get are. In my opinion, by far the best feature of this card is that it's going to give you 5% back on any Amazon gift card. What's really crazy about this 5% cash back is that it's actually even more than the 3% cash back that Amazon's own Amazon Rewards Visa Signature card is going to give you by default. That Amazon card can be upgraded to 5% back if you have Amazon Prime. So that would make them tied, right? You get 5% from Fold and 5% from the Amazon card if you sign up with Prime. But there is actually an X factor to the Fold card that's gonna allow you to get a little bit more than 5%. The big gimmick of the Fold card is that after every debit card purchase, you get a spin of this roulette wheel that gives you bonus Bitcoin. On normal purchases where you're just going and swiping this debit card, let's say you're at a restaurant, this roulette wheel is where you're getting all of your rewards. But if you go into the Fold, app and purchase a gift card, like the one that you could get for Amazon for 5% back, you get the 5% back in Bitcoin for the Amazon gift card, and then you get a roulette wheel spin. So you will end up with a little bit more than 5% back. I did the math on all the purchases that I've made on this fold card over the last four months. I've spent around $1,100. And so far I've received around 117,000 Satoshis. And a Satoshi is basically the smallest unit of Bitcoin. It's one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. As of today, my total value is around $68, which is about 6% of my total money spent on the fold card, which is really good. It's better than most cashback cards would get you. And really that extra 1% is basically coming from the roulette wheel. Most of the purchases that I've made on the fold card have been Amazon gift cards. And so that's where that base 5% is coming from. And then that extra 1% is coming from all those roulette wheel spins and then price appreciation from Bitcoin. The people at fold change the roulette wheel every month, but the expected payout of the roulette wheel stays about the same. Some of the cool things that have been on the roulette wheel in the past are things like 75 times your purchase price back in Satoshis. So if you spent $100, you'd be getting 7,500 Satoshis back. And then other items like biggest purchase of the week back in Satoshis. So if you just spent $1, but previously in the week you had spent $100, you'd be getting 100 Satoshis back. Or really good things like $10 in Satoshis back if your purchase price is more than $20. And so you can see stuff like that could end up being a 50% back situation. Or it could be 0% back if you were underneath whatever that required spend was. And then the really big draw of the wheel is that on any purchase, you have the chance to win up to one full Bitcoin, which obviously this is a very, very small percent chance of happening because Fold would go out of business if they gave a Bitcoin 50 or $60,000 to everyone every time they bought donuts, right? If that was the case, I would buy a lot of donuts. But it's like playing the lottery. You're probably not going to get that one Bitcoin. The chances are astronomically low. So the wheel is really really fun. And the idea that you could win a Bitcoin on everything that you purchase is really exciting. And it feeds on that like fun dopamine gambling part of your brain. But the wheel also kind of sucks. With the typical credit card, you get very steady rewards. Maybe it's 1.5% cash back on everything or 3% back on Amazon, 2% back on dining, something normal like that. But with the fold card, since there are elements of that wheel that are highly skewed to huge value things like that one Bitcoin that are very rare events, there have to be other 
other things on the wheel that make up for that really high payout. So some of the other things on the wheel that are very, very common payouts are really low percent cash payouts. You could on a $100 purchase end up spinning 10 times sats back, which at the current exchange rate is about 60 cents, which would be like 0.6% cash back, which is obviously way worse than just using a 1.5 times cash back card or even a 2% cash back card. This is like three times worse than that. So overall, the rewards are fun, but they are really inconsistent. And if you don't like your dopamine centers or your brain being manipulated by basically gambling, you're gonna wanna stay away from this card. Some of the other problems I have with the card, these are just some like basic bank funding things. It's actually kind of difficult to fund the card. When I first heard of this, I thought about using this card as my traditional checking account and getting rid of my current checking account, but it actually takes a really long time to send and receive ACHs to this checking account, and that just makes it not really worth using. It's really good for direct deposit, but if you need to quickly send and receive money for like bill pay and stuff like that, I've had a lot of problems with this full debit card checking account. And then on top of that, it just doesn't have the same banking services that you would expect from a full service bank. The one I'm using right now is Charles Schwab, and that checking account is excellent. You can really do anything with it, and it's pretty fast. And again, full service. You can do anything that you would want to do with a checking account, basically, you can do with this Charles Schwab account. But this full debit account, it's a little jankier. People in the Discord are funding it with like Apple Pay. And unless you really want to get into some of those technical things, you might want to stay away from this card for that reason. Another big miss, in my opinion, for this card is you actually only receive spins for debit card purchases. And so you don't receive any spins at all for just a typical ACH that you might use to pay your rent or to pay your car payment or to pay gym fees or anything like that. Those things that you're right now probably getting 0% back on because it's just a direct debit to your bank account, you're still getting 0% back with the fold card. It doesn't give you a spin for those things, which in my opinion is like a huge missed opportunity. It would be great if we could get Bitcoin back for paying our rent, if we could get Bitcoin back for paying car payments, stuff like that. If you're in a situation where your landlord or your car company allows you to use a debit card to do those payments, this actually might be a really good thing for you because you would have that chance of getting some huge percent Bitcoin back on those large payments that you're making every month. On top of all of this, there is an annual fee associated with the premium version of the card. And that annual fee is getting you a better spin wheel, which again is very gimmicky, a higher monthly limit on the amount of Amazon gift cards that you can purchase and get that 5% back on. So it's not unlimited, there is a cap. And then the premium version of the card does give you a few other features. And down in the description, I'm gonna leave a link with a comparison of the no fee version of the card to the premium version of the card that costs $150 a year. To withdraw Bitcoin rewards from your Fold app, you have to have held the Bitcoin for 30 days, and then you have to be withdrawing more than 50,000 Satoshis, which by itself getting to 50,000 Satoshis, that could take you a couple weeks or a couple months, depending on how much money you actually spend on this card. And then when you do go to withdraw, they only process withdrawals on Fridays. So if you need that Bitcoin reward right away, you basically are not going to be able to get it. You're going to have to wait an entire month and then up to another full week just for them to process that withdrawal on a Friday. And then my final annoyance, and if this continues, I'll probably stop using the card altogether, is that when there's peak demand for some of these gift cards, which in my opinion is the best use case for the card, you know, getting that 5% back from Amazon or 17% back from Callaway. And then on top of that, getting a spin where you have the chance to get zero to 3% back on top of it. When there's peak demand for some of these gift cards, they actually can go completely out of stock and then you're sort of out of luck. You basically have to wait for Fold to get in touch with their partners and restock the gift cards. So overall, my problems with the Fold card are just that it's generally inconsistent, right? It's inconsistent in the rewards. It's inconsistent in when you can get the withdrawals. It's kind of inconvenient. And then it's inconsistent with when those gift cards are available. And the gift cards are really the main reason, I think, that you would want to use the card in the first place. So now let's talk about whether or not you should be getting one of these cards. If you shop on Amazon and spend a couple hundred bucks a month there, I think this card is actually a no brainer. I personally don't pay for Amazon Prime, so I wouldn't be eligible for that 5% back from the Amazon card. And the Fold card actually allows me to get more than 5% back from the spin wheels every month. However, if you think of Amazon Prime as the annual fee of your Amazon credit card, that Amazon card is probably better overall utility than the Fold card, which is a little more gimmicky because you are getting so much extra stuff with Amazon Prime over here when you use the credit card and Amazon Prime combined with each other. If I could do this all over again, I would probably go with the no annual fee version of the Fold card just because I don't spend enough money on Amazon every month to justify having the premium.
premium version of the card. And even though the spin wheel is a little worse, the spin wheel is so inconsistent anyway that it doesn't really matter to me what's on the wheel. As long as you're getting something back, I think it's worth the spin. Where I could see this card being really, really helpful for someone is if you do do a lot of shopping at a place where Fold has a really high percent back for gift cards. Like I think they have 17% at Callaway and 10% at LL Bean and 7% at Under Armour and some other athletic wear stores. If you do a lot of shopping at those places, specifically Callaway, if you're a golfer, maybe this is the best credit card ever because not only would you be getting that 17% back, but then you'd be getting the money on top of it from the spins and you're getting it in Bitcoin, yada, yada. However, if those gift cards are not available, this card is way too gimmicky to be using in my opinion. And it's definitely way too gimmicky to be paying an $150 annual fee for. I'll probably end up canceling my card after the end of this year, just because I don't want to get charged that annual fee again, especially when I'm ineligible for the sign up bonus, obviously in year two. I've seen a lot of reviews on YouTube comparing this fold card to the crypto.com debit card. The crypto.com card is a complete non-starter for me. I actually would never consider signing up for that debit card. And that's because I refuse to buy their coin that gives you better rewards on the debit card. You shouldn't have to hold assets in a company just to receive good debit card rewards or good credit card rewards. That card feels very slimy to me overall. And so I personally would never sign up for something like that. And I would encourage you to do your own research before you sign up for a card like that. Overall, I'd give this fold card about a C plus. It's really gimmicky. It's pretty fun. If you like gambling and the roulette wheel, you might really like this. If you are triggered by gambling and basically other people hijacking your dopamine centers of your brain, you're going to want to stay as far away from this card as possible. And then additionally, I think there's basically no reason to be paying the annual fee for this card. The basic version of the card is good enough to get you those deals on Amazon, which I think is really the big reason to use this card. On top of obviously supporting the Bitcoin community and efforts like this to bring Bitcoin into a more traditional finance setting. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to be making more cash that you would have to put into Bitcoin with just a normal cash back card. Like the video if you learned something. Comment down below if you think the fold card is really cool or interesting, or if you think that it's stupid, gimmicky, and a waste of time. I'm really interested to hear your guys' opinions. I'm sort of leaning towards stupid, gimmicky, waste of time, especially paying the annual fee. I really wish that I had just gone for the no annual fee version of the card. And then if you do have any questions, leave those in the comments as well. I do respond to all the comments. And then subscribe and hit the notification bell for more tech, money, and success videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.